We've been given the big story coming in from Tamil Nadu where the floor test for the Palani Sami government has now reduced itself to a bit of a farce. We are told that Tamil Nadu Assembly has been adjourned for now after the violence. The Speaker has actually walked out. The Assembly held up till 1 p.m. after the unruly scenes, MLAs indulging in violence, breaking chairs and tables. We don't know how long this is going to continue, but this is extremely depressing, disappointing news coming in there from Tamil Nadu. In a sense, a repeat, some would say, of what happened in the late 1980s when the MGR faction led by Janki Ramchandran clashed with Jailalita. Remember how Jailalita was roughed up inside the assembly, allegedly by the DMK, and that really sparked off the rise and wrath of Jailalita. Remember also 1998 when Jagdambika Pal versus Kalyan Singh descended into similar chaos. Very, very depressing news coming in at the moment there from Chennai. Biswajit Bhattacharya. Adv additional Solicitor General joining me, former Additional Solicitor General joining me, sir. From a legal perspective, what does the Speaker do? He has to have a vote according to KTS Tulsi. He cannot allow the Assembly to be repeatedly adjourned. But if it is, and the opposition is determined to do so, is are we heading to a situation where the Speaker simply throws up his hands or orders a voice vote and says, that's it. I was not allowed to have a proper division. Voice vote, Palani Swami continue. Or... The opposition goes to the governor and says there's a breakdown of constitutional law and order. Please keep the assembly in suspended animation. Put the state under governor's rule. Well, both the possibilities, Rajdeep, will be within the realm of law. But there is a larger issue here. I am concerned about the fact, the manner in which the legislatures have conducted themselves. You see, this is the reason why judiciary intervenes. People talk about judiciary's overreach and the doctrine of I mean, separation of power, etc., etc. Now, Jagdambika Pal case of 1998 uh, in 24th of February was precisely for this reason. And I remember the uh, uh, former speaker, Somna Chatterjee, etc., were also very, very critical about the overreach. But if under these circumstances the speaker conducts a voice vote or, you know, the opposition goes to the governor and says that the, there is a total failure of the constitutional machinery under article 355 and 356 of the constitution and the president of india on its own or arising out of a report given by the governor or even as a sequel to a report which in my view the speaker can give you know takes over the administration of the state which is called the president's rule i will not be surprised no, no, I will, I, are you saying that simply can the opposition be allowed to hijack an assembly so that no, the speaker no, no. forces uh, is forced to uh, no, uh, no. push uh, for president's rule or recommend president's rule that is the intention of the opposition that is very very crystal clear yes but that's but i am saying this is one possibility the other possibility this may constrain the speaker now what i'm saying now since i am not being allowed to work voice vote he and can it, he can do that of right? course he can he do can that. certainly say and, i was prevented from and, having a division hence i am having a voice vote he must do that because the situation cannot go on like this indefinitely in tamil nadu from 22nd of september last year when jailalitha uh, went to went to the hospital there has virtually been no go governance add to that jallikattu problem add to that drought and add to all this drama in action of the government and, and now action, so action. you're saying a voice vote now if this continues like this for another half an hour is the only way if at one o'clock speaker has reconvened the house at one if the house continues to be disrupted does he allow the disruptions to continue till 10 min, uh, 10 o'clock in the night say look i gave you a full chance now i will have a voice vote or does he do it at one o'clock itself no he can do it at one, one o'clock itself and one thing the speaker has made it very very abundantly clear is that he is not going to postpone it in fact, I have heard uh, reports that speaker has very, very emphatically stated there is no point to do it today. The speaker started all in all right earnest. So there was possibly a division of six groups and yes. one group had already voted, it seems. But after that, you know, DMK also started uh, making uh, some statements and the speaker very, very generously allowed the DMK to speak. But, you know, generosity of the speaker. Uh, should not be misconstrued as a weakness of the speaker because speaker is the master of the proceedings within the house at least he is the master of proceedings as of today when such an important momentous decision of vote of confidence is being sought so let and you know the vote of confidence is always a snapshot in a motion this snapshot in a motion as 
on a particular time may vary with time. It may change at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Horse trading. And what is horse trading? It is rampant corruption in public life which our democratic structure of the country has unfortunately been afflicted with. So therefore, the speaker has to act decisively. Enough is enough. Have a voice vote or allow a division vote or if they insist, even the third possibility, I will not rule out. If you can have a secret ballot within the time frame of 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, so be it. So all the three possibilities should be open. The speaker is the last word today and the country expects can the I, speaker to be decisive. Can I ask Narayan, I don't know if A. Sarvanan, spokesperson and leader of the DMK is still with us. Has he joined us? Not joined us, but I, Narayan Lakshman, you know, the DMK may have had the moral advantage till this morning. So would O. Paneer Selvam. Now, I, and I can see on Twitter, people reminding me, 1988, remember what happened in the Tamil Nadu Assembly? Remember how Jailalitha was roughed up? And that really led to the rise of Jailalitha. Mm -hmm. Today, the DMK, which this still this morning had the moral advantage, will it lose it if these scenes are shown to the public of Tamil Nadu? That you have been throwing mics, you are jumping on the speaker's chair, you are pushing tables. Will the DMK lose the... The, the public support, if they disrupt this floor of uh, uh, this assembly test or they don't care about it, they simply want to send out a message um, that the, there is a constitutional breakdown. And the DMK's search for legitimacy. Uh, in that sense, I think, uh, like we were discussing, this is absolutely the, a panic button move. It has come to the day when the, uh, the governor decided, allowed for uh, a swearing in to happen, and then uh, Mr. Parnisami set. Uh, the, uh, the speaker set the time for the, uh, the floor vote. It has come to that moment. Everyone arrived in their official vehicles at the, at the assembly. And then there was no constitutional options left. So the DMK has absolutely thrown its, uh, you know, every last vestige of uh, sort of a politically moral behavior aside and has engaged in r violence. I heard reports of uh, MLAs jumping on chairs, sitting. It's such a symbolically powerful issue. They sit, an MLA, DMK MLA sat in the speaker's chair. What does that mean? We are trying to take over the voice of constitutional authority in this state, regardless of whether we are due for, to have that voice or not. So what you're witnessing here is a power grab. There is no other way to characterize it. It is a power grab. And the speaker, again, has to maintain a cool head, has to proceed with a vote, and only then will absolutely, ab absolute constitutional uh, sort of moral correctness return to the state. So until that point, we are witnessing a complete state of flux, and uh, we'll see how things unfold in the hour Morality, ahead. morality, Narayan, unfortunately, is a word which no longer has any value in our politics. It's now all about a power grab. The DMK also sees this as a moment, in a sense, to embarrass the AI DMK, take advantage of the implosion in the AI DMK. Our correspondents, Akshita Nangopal, Padmaja Joshi, on ground zero. Padmaja, what are you hearing at the moment? At one o'clock, will there be any change in stance or are we heading for a long Saturday where the House will be repeatedly interrupted till the Speaker finally gives up and orders a voice vote? Akshita, can you give us a sense of what you're hearing? Uh, well, at this point, Rajdeep, yes, the House has been adjourned till 1 p.m., but we understand that all the MLAs, the ministers, along with the Opani Selvam, they're all still very much inside the House. They're waiting for the House to re-adjourn. We have to keep in mind uh, that the ruckus so far that we've witnessed is by the DMK MLAs. To give you a quick timeline of what happened, it started with an MLA, Poon Gote, who got onto her chair started screaming slogans, uh, you know, uh, for OPS against Pal uh, Sami, and then they started tearing up the assembly books, started throwing the pages around. Soon after that, we understand the chairs were being thrown around, were being tossed about, were being broken. They then rushed towards the speaker's table, tried reportedly to stand and sit on it, and that's when the, uh, the table broke. They then turned it over, placed it upside down. Uh, soon after that, the assembly police uh, ushered away the speaker, DMK MLA Selvam then went and sat in the speaker's chair itself and that's when the house was adjourned. It's unprecedented the kind of ruckus that we're witnessing. And you know Rajdeep, I think to a large extent this is why we're not seeing a live telecast of what's happening in the assembly. This kind of ruckus is shameful to say the least. I don't want to use the word unprecedented in a way because there is a precedence, 1988. Let's go back to what happened the day when Jailalita alleged that she was almost molested. 
in in the assembly and someone had to throw a shawl to protect her at that moment and remember this is 2017 some things don't seem to have changed i mentioned up 1998 but we could go back to 1988 we could go back to several instances taking place across this country we've seen things happening shameful scenes in maharashtra shameful scenes in odisha shameful scenes taking place in tripura we've seen in gujarat as well these are states that have also witnessed depressing scenes inside the assembly but nothing some would say quite as bad as what we believe is happening today possibly up 1998 and tamil Nadu 1988 the worst examples in this regard when it comes to actually a floor test the others were more clashes between opposition and government here we are seeing actually during a floor test we are told and i only hope that we will get some images if only to show this country the kind of disgraceful images of our politicians and what they've reduced our democracy to today tamil Nadu will hang its head in shame in a way seeing these scenes playing out on their screens mlas have decided in a way to use the assembly as a battleground the governor wanted a floor test it's turning out instead to be a wrestling mat that's what we are hearing one o'clock we are told is when the speaker has reconvened the assembly we'll be back in a moment Plenty more. Tell you also the numbers game and why exactly is this dangal taking place on the floor of the house. Uh, lots happening in the Tamil Nadu assembly. Large contingent of police we can see outside the assembly because inside the assembly our uh, lawmakers are turning out to be lawbreakers. That's the sad truth and the sad reality of what's happening inside the assembly. 108 emergency is being brought in because who knows? MLAs may well end up targeting each other we fear. Clearly, the situation is now reaching crisis point there inside the assembly. Pramod Madhav is bringing us a report from inside the assembly. So here we are at Fort St. George and literally there is literally action taking place inside the Tamil Nadu assembly. From 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. it was nothing but ruckus possibility for flow test DMK OPS IUML and many people asked for but that did not happen here and as you can see there is like a lot of police presence this is the situation over here though Edapadi Parniswami that the new chief minister wants to concern take a seekers a vote ballot like a, a flow test and prove his majority apparently what's happening here is that DMK like we uh, like already predicted seems to have its own plan that plan is to stall the assembly or not just that already a lot of chairs tables, and many of the properties inside the assembly have been broken right now the assembly has been pushed to one o'clock we don't know what how it's going to be in the afternoon as well but all we can say is that for Edda party Parniswamy to prove his uh, majority for the two day it's going to be a really really tough situation in Chennai with camera person Daniel Pramod Madhav other they're reporting from outside the assembly also Padmaja Joshi following Padmaja do we know whether the speaker is now we're getting images of people who we are told have been hurt there are there are reports that one or two MLAs may have been hurt in the ruckus what are you hearing about take a look at that these are the kind of images my god this is dry drama that's taking place at the moment in Tamil Nadu an MLA we are told has been injured we're told an administrator, an assembly administrator has been hurt in the ruckus. He's being taken in an ambulance. That's an uh, uh, assembly administrator. That's what we are hearing at the moment. Let me go to you, Padmaja. Are we hoping that the speaker at 1 o'clock can bring some control? Has the opposition decided, irrespective of what happens, they will not allow this assembly to function? Right now, the opposition, the OPS camp and the BMK is quite clear till the time that their demands are made. They are insistent that this should be postponed, the vote should be postponed. We spoke to some people in that camp and they said, what is the point of doing it immediately? What is the hurry? Uh, if you are not confident of your numbers, uh, then why go ahead with the protest right now? And if you are, let these people go back to their constituency. Uh, let me also tell you that there are some initial reports coming in that one MLA who has been taken in the ambulance, who just left from the assembly a while ago, a few seconds 
seconds ago Rajbir Pyoring it is an MLA of the DMK he is about 60 years of age and he had recently undergone a bypass and it turns out that the ruckus and all that sloganeering and throwing about of chairs and people upturning overturning rather the speaker's table even as we speak uh, there are people who are sitting in the speaker's chair one of the DMK MLAs flung himself on that they overturned the speaker's table they broke chairs tore papers threw it up in the air and all of that turned out to be too much of this for this one uh, DMK MLA who we are learning has been taken away so conflicting reports coming but people telling me that it is an MLA of the DMK who is now been taken away from the assembly in an ambulance okay we need to get confirmation whether that's an MLA or an administrator some reports suggesting that it is an official of the assembly but either way as these screens uh, scenes play out Mr Bhattacharya as a former additional solicitor general of the country i mean this is a shameful day i mean surely this is another new law i asked a friend to tell me more instances and they are coming up with more remember what happened they say in kerala in karnataka in maharashtra my home state in 2009 in gujarat 1996 there have been numerous examples we've seen pepper spray during the telangana debate being thrown in parliament so andhra pradesh has not been immune to it but we are seeing in tamil nadu a repeat of what happened in 1987 and 88 and remember the public sentiment went at that occasion with jailalitha after she was roughed up so maybe the opposition needs to be conscious of that as well or do you believe it doesn't matter anymore no, no, these rules are they even aware that the that the house has to be treated with a certain sanctity the 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 sanctity the sanctity of the house has to be maintained and in tamil nadu you know history is repeating itself after 29 years and what happened in uttar pradesh also is very very you know very sad and what happened today in tamil nadu assembly people breaking chairs elected representative breaking chairs is a disgraceful it's a total shame on the democratic structure of the country and uh, i i hope i hope that when the house reassembles at 1 pm some sign kind of i mean decorum shall shall prevail and the speaker will have to take a very very decisive role and if speaker in spite of taking a decisive role he is unable to conduct the test today itself which he has very very affirmatively decided he will do it then you know the matter may basically sort of linger on and uh, the governor then may be constrained to keep the assembly under suspended animation mm -hmm. and pending you know somebody else may be invited to form the government but i don't think i don't see it happening i, I had I, a i had a faint suspicion i had a faint suspicion right from day one that tamil nadu is heading for a chaos so therefore then the center will stay step in as i have been mentioning i mean repeatedly the center under article 355 cannot turn a nelson's eyes to its constitutional obligation of protecting every state mm -hmm. so that the administration of the state is carried out in accordance with the constitutional machinery of every state india yes. is a federal democratic republic but with a slight tilt and slant in favor of the center right so i think this is a fort fertile ground is being i mean sort of created Can by we... powers that be to create further chaos i i want to get one confirmation i don't know if our correspondents are there padmaja we are getting two views one the person taken in the assembly uh, taken out of the assembly was a dmk mla the other is that he is i am told a member of the staff of the assembly so there is no confirmation as to what is as i said there's been a media blackout of the proceedings inside the assembly but it's that image which is coming out narayan any views uh, any news from the hindu correspondents that you have there the person who's been injured taking uh, oshini taken on that assembly uh, take being taken out is he a member of the dmk an mla or is it someone who is with the staff we are told of the assembly any idea nothing definitive but we are also hearing uh, two uh, types of reports one suggesting it's an mla and one is a staff so i think we should probably wait for a greater clarity on the identity of that person i don't know what training i am told uh, it's a uh, employee uh, and okay. his name is uh, balaji an employee his name is balaji you are saying shrini who has been injured and is being taken out there out of the assembly this is really shameful 108 emergency tamil nadu is in a state of an emergency 
a state which is known for its vibrant civil society, which is known for some of its great traditions of music, culture, art, today finding that when it comes to its political culture, it's back to the 80s, the era of rowdyism and confrontation in state assemblies. Doesn't seem to have left that state of Tamil Nadu. Back in a moment with plenty more. We aren't going away from this story. This is the channel that began this entire drama. We will be with it right till the very end.